So, a couple of weeks ago I was bored, like really, really bored, and yet I had to write some scripts for my channel. So, I decided to write a desktop tire list video, and yet I was even too bored to do that. So, I decided to do an experiment. I asked my viewers to write the video for me. So, what you're about to see is what my viewers uh, produced regarding desktop tire list. So, my first attempt was just creating a Google document with the beginning of the script and sharing the link around. This did not work. What happened is uh, this. So we've got some text regarding the future of Kitty Plasma Mobile Plus, whatever that is, and some other random text. Any mention of a tire list quickly disappeared. Sorry about that. Attempt 2 was a bit more smart. I created a Google Sheet where the information on what to do was protected, so only I could change those cells. Everything else was up to my viewers, and this actually worked much better. And you can see a lot of pros and cons for a lot of desktop environments. Thus, let's see what they said and whether I agree with them or not. Starting off with the KD Plasma, we have mentions of great performance, something I agree with strongly. I've used Plasma on low-hand devices, and even though it might seem a bit laggy at first, that's because QML is building up the cache of the items on the screen, and it very quickly becomes super responsive. We have a theming, which is obviously a big advantage, along with mentions of Plasma being extendable, customizable, and so on. There's mentions of great high DPI scaling, and I indeed think that Plasma is leading in that as well. And of course, Plasma is also very popular, meaning that there's a lot of support around it, and it looks nice out of the box, I hope. I hope. <laughs> All great points, I think. What about the bets, though? The very first comment says, how many can I get? So we're off to a great start. We have Plasma performs badly on Nvidia, which is probably true. I admit that I'm a bit out of the loop on that, and I'm not sure how much of that is due to us rather than being Nvidia's fault. So next up is a bit inconsistent, especially when themes are in use, which is totally true as well. And I do say that as the ex-leader of the KD consistency goal, with an environment and a community that's as large as KD is, it's just tough to keep everything nice and consistent. And to be honest, QT's messy approach to theming does not help at all. Then, the on-screen keyboard works for Wayland, but on X Wayland it does not auto appear, nor does it resize windows when triggered. This is also a fair criticism. The whole system really wasn't thought for touch screens. However, there have been great improvements lately on this side of things. As an example, the whole UI becomes bigger when you enter touch mode. There's a cons that says KRunner is always alive, which I really think should be a pro. Countless times I had to use KRunner to restart Plasma Shell whilst messing with system stuff. We also have can break horribly, which is true, and UI doesn't look nice when text is scaled up, which is also true. So, since this is a tire list, I do have to assign Plasma to a tire. I've decided to go with the desktop environments are all different, you should pick one depending on your use case and comparing them is not that useful tire. So, yes, that's the name. So, let's uh, directly switch to GNOME. We've got again mentions of GNOME being really popular and thus having great support system around it, which is totally valid here as well. Touch support is very good with smooth gestures and in intuitive gestures. Fully agree on this one, though do let me say that again Plasma is also improving on this front and the touch screen gestures are now really good. There's great interface consistency even with third-party apps thank thanks to their uh, Circle initiative. It's something that I personally envy a lot of the GNOME project. Somebody points out that extensions are actually pretty cool, uh, unless you have to update I guess, uh, which is also something I agree with to be clear. It's often easier to just have one big source of customizations instead of many different categories you have to navigate between. 
GNOME is also objectively great for new or light users who don't need super powerful desktops. Then somebody claims that GNOME has the fastest workflow once you're used to it. I'm not sure if the workflow is really the fastest, but I do like it a lot and it's the one that I use in KDE Plasma as well, so yeah, I can agree there. Going into the negatives, somebody points out NVIDIA again, though this raises a comparison with Plasma. Yet again, I'm not sure how much GNOME is to blame. Somebody claims GNOME is resource intensive. I'm not completely sold on the claim, but it's true that I wouldn't classify it as one of the lightest desktops. Somebody else says that there aren't enough customization options out of the box, but I would disagree and I think it's the philosophy of the project itself not to have them and it's still really competitive with extensions. There's complaints about the GNOME team, they make strong decisions that can annoy the community like Libatwaita, etc. And I'm not really gonna get into the details of the discussion here, I don't like this kind of controversy, but it is true that the GNOME developers seem to be a bit more often in controversy with the users compared to other desktops, and I guess that's a cons to consider. And that's it, and surprisingly enough I would still place this in the same tire as KD Plasma. So next up is XFCE, we've got the obvious, so it's lightweight, it's simple, it's easy to use, I'm not completely sold on the easy to use claim, but I will let it slide. Somebody praises the customization, saying that it's straightforward and the starting points is usually right clicking the thing. I've never actually customized XFC a lot with the sole exceptions of the panel and to be honest, as I've described before, I do not have a good opinion on uh, XFC panel settings. So let's switch to the negatives. We have slow development and no Wayland. Both of these are very true and important in my opinion. However, I do recall Wayland being on the works so that uh, should be addressed sh soon-ish. There's also looks dated out of the box, something I fully agree with, that won't really let me use the desktop on a regular basis. Another less kind user even says it's ugly out of the box and styling used for settings ripped Windows XP. I do not like at all the tone of this criticism, but I think I get the idea behind it. I've thought about this one a lot, a lot, a lot. but at the end I think I'm just gonna put XFC in the same category as Plasma and GNOME. I do really think it's up there. Next up is Mate. We don't have much uh, about it uh, at all. So good thing, literally GNOME 2. And that's it. Okay, look, I guess that it's nice that the sentence that defines the whole desktop is a pro, but I have to admit it's quite lacking. However, I never used Mate either, so I can't add any words of my own. Feel free to do that in the comments. Negatives, not touch friendly, especially the touch panel, the top panel. Yet again, I don't think if I don't know if that's true, sorry, but I don't really find it that hard to believe. Still, let's put this in the same category as Plasma, GNOME and XFC, shall we? Then we have Cinnamon. Pros, it supports X11, which is probably the weirdest comment so far, given that to the best of my knowledge, all of the desktops that I've mentioned so far support X11, w what? D do they only support X11? Because that would be a negative. There is somebody pointing out that Cinnamon is the most Windows-like desktop in their opinion, which can indeed be a pro for those who are just now switching from that proprietary operating system. We again have literally GNOME 2, but at least there's but upgraded to, and oh, somebody just learned how to put multiple messages in the same cell. Okay, so let's talk negative stuff. We only have a couple. One complains about a complete lack of animations, which is indeed something that would annoy me significantly. And we do have slow to adopt Twayland, which we've also seen on the pro side of things for some reason. 
So is the good more than the bad? After a careful consideration, I have decided to put Cinnamon in the same exact tire as Plasma, Gnome, XFC and Mate. We do have lots of other desktops with only a couple of comments on them and this video would be way too long to cover everything, but very quickly. LXD and LXQT are customizable, blazingly fast and apparently you can use them with different window managers. This is also true for Plasma, by the way. Enlightenment has uh, as its only negative comment, no problem, which, um, okay. What do you want me to say? Budgie has some more comments. It is a Windows-like layout, so again, it's going to be easier if you're switching from that operating system. However, the support for multi-monitor has at least one person who isn't happy with it, and it requires an additional theme besides GTK to theme the desktop, which, by the way, also applies to Plasma, uh, which uses a different theme for the desktop compared to the applications. What about Openbox? Is that a desktop? Well, it is lightweight and has great documentation and does not require a full desktop. It uses JTK, however, window headers are a bit small and a bit too thin, though I would be surprised if there was no way to customize that. Now, this is actually everything as far as normal desktops, let's say, go. However, somebody decided to go full history mode and added something like 30 other desktops, though I'm not sure they're all actually desktops. Either I go full Eminem or I won't be able to cover all of them. So let's go full Eminem. So let's speed up. Uh, next space is Spiffy. GNU Step with Window Maker is pretty cool if you like retro computers but old. GNU Step is also old but it's weirdly functional even under a Wayland compositor. Etoil has very innovative ideas not found in other Nix environments of its era. Lumina is, well, uh, lightweight. Sugar is easy for children to use and sweaty but it's intentionally limited. Rox is very drag and drop friendly, I wonder what that means. Ukui is a verbatim copy of Windows and basically a plasma reskin, knowing Ukui I'm not sure I agree but whatever. CDE is totally better than KD Plasma, shots fired, but um, it's maintained a lot apparently, I doubt that, but it's true that it's historically significant to the progression of Nick's GUI. It's also hold as hell, closed source and package installation from the ore break, so yeah, not so good. GEM has a very straightforward interface, but it got bonked with pit, pit, uh, patents by Apple, which made them adopt a very weird user interface in uh, very weird user interface in later versions. Maybe I should investigate that in its own video. JDS is like GNOME 2, but more friendly toward old Windows folk, but font rendering is hell. Same applies to the Eurifix ah, interactive desktop, which is also technically impressive for the time and its low cost, whatever that means. Then there's after step. I'm really hoping all of these are like made up because it's getting oddly specific which has an efficient use of system resources, but is easily one of the worst OpenStep adaptations for X. I don't even know what that project is, lol. We have FVWM, what that is. <laughs> it's one of the most historically significant window manager, a direct ancestor of XFWM, which is XFC window manager, but, but also Enlightenment, Afterstep, and Kiwin. But it's kind of sticky to, you, to use in 2023, and I would be surprised if it wasn't. Then Rio, or Rio Bravo, I have no idea, which has removed Remoting so seamlessly that's no distinction between local and remote, which is super interesting by the way, I should investigate that. It has also a straightforward three mouse button interface. What's that? And a nesting doll style window manager. Okay, look, you're making this up. You're just throwing random words at me. So negatives, the export is kinda dull. J just that. Okay, so the list goes on for like 20 more desktops. I have to stop here for obvious reasons, but I will leave a link to the spreadsheet or a copy of it so you can go through the full list and learn about other desktops assuming as it might be that they aren't just made up. <laughs> I think they are real, but 
but still, you can have some fun. I, I totally did, by the way, whilst doing this not as zero effort as I wanted video. So thanks everybody, and before I cut the video, let me say a big thank to everybody who's actually actively supporting the channel, because if I don't reach like the money goal every month, like I have to pay bills, so I kinda wouldn't do these videos, but thanks to you, I do. So if you're able to like uh, get on the Patreon, the Ko-Fi, uh, the Libra Pay, the people, I do give some benefits to the people who donate, so you can just, you know, enjoy those benefits. I haven't published a single benefit in the last month, but that's gonna change very soon. So if you wanna get in, that would be awesome and actually help out the channel very much. I will be getting back into KD development a lot. And by the way, this is one of the very last videos I record in this studio because I'm moving so wish me luck that that was fun I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again one day